Ross, hey, it's Jerry Mikulski. You asked a really good question on LinkedIn over here, and um, uh, you posted a, a bunch of tools that you were looking at, but you're trying to figure out how these tools might, how do we collaborate using these tools, and which, tool, which platforms might we use? Uh, among your various respondents, Chuck Frey mentioned the brain. I'm obviously a big brain fan. I've used the brain to take your question and track down uh, a couple of these I hadn't heard of, so I added them, but the other ones I already had in here. So I, I have Link Curious under data visualization tools based on Gephi. Uh, uh, here's Yohai Nakajima and his work on different things, different kinds of projects, uh, Min Yohai and Instagraph and MindGraph in particular. Uh, and so forth. So I will, I will pass these links uh, into my response so anybody else can go follow these around. Uh, now, what I started thinking about was who else ought to be in this conversation and what other topics are germane here? And a couple things uh, came up for me. One big one is uh, I have a supra category, basically a large umbrella for all the different subcategories of what I call tools for thinking. So this is, this is the broader catchment for all different kinds of things from personal knowledge management to personal knowledge networks, uh, enterprise knowledge graphs, dynamic knowledge repositories. So here's uh, Jack Park talking about dynamic knowledge repositories. Uh, and a variety of other things. Distributed knowledge graphs, uh, Underlay, which is part of uh, the Knowledge Futures Group, which is Danny Hillis's venture after having sold the, the knowledge graph to uh, Google. Also uh, important here are people trying to create protocols that will allow these various tools to talk to each other. And one of those efforts is Gordon Brander's Noosphere protocol, which he recently put on hold, but he was getting pretty far. He had a Substack newsletter where he was describing it. Uh, here's Gordon, uh, who used to be at Mozilla and the Media Lab, and also at Google, uh, has a website and a project called Subconscious. But um, other people are trying to figure out how do we connect these different tools, and I think that's actually really important. Uh, people who are doing interesting work, uh, Maggie Appleton is a digital, self-described digital gardener. She has a lot of very thoughtful posts about uh, what's happening in this space. Uh, Sari Azut has uh, her startup Sublime, which is trying to help create a very simple sharing platform where people can collect up the things that they've seen and share them out to each other. That's also interesting. Uh, ben Roberts is using Kumu to manage uh, a community of people who are trying to fix the world in different ways so that they might meet and connect. Uh, other people like Jean Bellinger are, uh, and uh, Christina Bowen are basically black belts in using Kumu. And then this fellow Rich Burden has a project called BrainFrame where he's built a platform called uh, the Distributed uh, the Decentralized Operating System that lets people have uh, IDs on a platform with distributed data where they can share the data and he would like third parties to come in and build frames uh, which are third party apps that use the data on the platform. So in principle one of those tools could look like Roam Research and be an outliner with backlinks. One of those tools could look more like the brain and use brain-like interface but they could all be uh, accessing and more importantly updating shared data. I think that's really really interesting as well. Now that's out on the horizon but but, uh, but uh, Rich has an application called Composer built uh, with the XOS, which uh, basically is working. You can go uh, get an account on Composer and start uh, doing uh, shared chat and document creation. It looks a little bit like a, a lively Google workspace in that sense. Uh, so these are some of the tools that uh, tools and things that I would point to. Uh, there's also Steven Johnson who cares a lot about this and has been a Devon Think fan for years and years. Uh, he has worked with Google, as you probably know, on the Notebook uh, LM project, which um, is also noteworthy here. I don't know that I connected this to the thought, so let me do that, connect it to other applications. Oh, I guess I did. There it is. Um, so Notebook LM is a different kind of intelligence here. It's really trying to find patterns and connections across documents and document content. Uh, again, I'm a big brain fan, and the Brain 14 did add generative AI in a couple different ways. Happy to answer questions about that or demonstrate that in a different video. But I will pause this one now and upload it.